What's up, everybody? It's your favorite nerd who stays inside. Favorite nerd, and today we are looking at MMC reformatted Gravis. Their take on an IDW brawn. Now, my biggest problem with this is that it just doesn't look a whole lot like him. It's just obviously like a reuse of the mold. At least in the books that I was reading. You never know. There could be some iteration of him in some book where he's drawn similarly to this. In fact, as I'm scrolling through, I'm seeing some that look a bit more similar. But overall, it doesn't seem to be the most indicative. But I guess because they have found some that looks similar, it is a decent enough use of the remold. We'll talk about that a bit in final thoughts. But right now, we're just going to focus on the figure itself and be as objective as we can in spite of how I feel about some of the business tactics being used here because there is a lot of good to talk about. But before we talk about anything, you know what we got to talk about. Some accessories. So he comes with a gun that's exactly the same as the one that we looked at uh, with Guzzle. Uh, no paint. Decent enough sculpt. Holds it the same way with tension on the fingers. It can be stored utilizing the same type of port on his back as Guzzle. And of course, it'll plug into the top there in alt mode as well. Gimmick wise, he has the same element as Guzzle, although I don't think this plays a part in any of the lore. It's just something that came with the mold, kind of, you know what I mean? So let's talk about the vehicle mode. I honestly think, and I don't know what he looks like in IDW as far as alt mode, but I honestly think that this looks more purposeful than the Guzzle. Like I believe this vehicle somehow. I believe this one, whereas the Guzzle one, I think, is more accurate, and I don't believe it as much. It's just it's just a aesthetic thing and a completely subjective thing, but this looks like some sort of alien mining-type vehicle or something, or maybe a tank. I don't really buy it as much as a tank, but yeah, I get this. I, I, I This one works for me. Don't know why. And you have some nice deco. This metallic blue here, the metallic yellow here, the silver, 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 the white and red on the back. All of that screams a little bit more of kind of care in the presentation of how this thing ultimately looks. And there it is next to Tiger Tracks. So let's get this thing transformed. Let's open up this top piece from the back thigh pieces. You can bring the back thighs down. You can open up these plates here, spin the foot in, close the plates, open up the feet. And this way we'll cover both transformations on the channel, which is I, I always, have, I feel like, of use. Back, close, flip flap, and then spin them around so that they face the front. Untab the forearms from the chest here on both sides and then untab them also from the inside of the flank. Spin them around. And then you can also spin the chest piece down. Man maneuver your uh, shoulder pads so that they make sense. Spin your forearms around so you can see the elbow joint. And then open these flaps here, which you know gives me grief. On both sides. Open this up, spin the hand out, rotate the tank treads in, collapse this back, and now you're utilizing these back pegs as opposed to the front ones. Clip in over and under, same on this side. Open up your flip flaps. Open this up, rotate your tank treads in, rotate your hand out. Close this up, utilize the back pegs as opposed to the front ones. And your arms are done. Untab this, which does uh, fit in that spot. It doesn't, this one doesn't tab in the same way, but it does fit, I feel like, also more purposefully in that spot than Guzzles does. Bring that down and then bring the head up, which will rotate the, uh, the backpack down as you do so. And then you just got to make sure that all your flip flaps are flip flap properly. So just use a little trial and error until you get it in there. There you go. And that's him. I'll get him cleaned up. We'll take a look at him. So let's look at the figure. The head is on a ball peg. It's going to be the same, right, engineering wise, but we'll just run through it. So you get up to there, down to there, the swivel, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the confused dog look. You got silver paint on the face and the metallic blue paint on the eyes, and it looks good sculpt-wise. When we get into the chest, I feel like this one just, I don't know, I feel like it just doesn't work as well. This blockiness here, 
something about it is off-putting. Maybe the, the size of the head in relationship to it. There's something that, that doesn't work as well for me. Maybe lack of connection. We have silver paint here and here. It looks like there's a differentiation in the oranges there. Like this might be a brown. Yeah, definitely. So you do get the ab crunch, which is done really well, and the swivel. You get your universal here with your shoulder piece that will move. So that'll get you out to 90 degrees and the arm around. This piece has a tendency to move with it. I've talked about how well these things are tolerance and I still adhere to that or um, co-sign that. But this is the one piece that's not quite right because as you go to move this swivel from the universal, this chest block tends to come with it. Uh, and that's you know, on both. I'm not sure if I mentioned it on guzzle. And then you have the reverse butterfly, which works well. Bicep swivel. Single hinged elbow that gets you 90 degrees. The fingers are individually articulated on a base pin knuckle, but you always have typewriter hands and the thumb is on a ball peg. And you get the two paint apps here, the same as you did with Guzzle. Looks like you got some silver paint here in the chest too, so that works well. Both arms are articulated the same way. Universals for hips <clears throat> get you the full Van Dam. Not quite the full Monty unless you get the backpack out of the way. Five swivel. Mm, that's a little tight there. Knee is at 90 degrees on a single hinge. That's really tight. This one, not so much. Silver paint accent and then the darker color in there. Toe tilt up, heel tilt down, heel tilt up, toe tilt down, and a rocker. <clears throat> so pretty much, you know, the same. There he is from the back. A couple more paint apps, I feel like, maybe in uh, alt mode. But... For the most part, kind of the same, the same deal, right? Size comparison wise, there he is with SXS Blur and the Mech Ideas Twin Twist. So pretty much right in line. And there he is with Bad Cube Brawn. So not that much smaller, honestly. Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negatives. And a lot of them are shared by the guzzle, right? So we won't harp on that. The price is the big issue with this set for me overall. The other thing is, here is a criticism that I've had regarding MMC. They reuse every mold, right? By and large. So what they usually do is, let's take this set as an example. Whereas guzzle is the standout character and the character that defines what the mold should be from this set. And what they used to do in the past is release this mold first. Because it's a new mold, people are unfamiliar with with it, it raises some excitement and people will get it. Whereas people really might want the guzzle instead. Then they release the guzzle second. This ensures that they move both molds or both representations within that single mold. And now what they've done is say, you know, I just put them together, make people buy both immediately. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, it's, it's barely tolerable because they're smaller bots, less complicated. So you can get them for 115, which still hurts, but it's not 200. You know what I mean? But what happens if it becomes 200. It's just always something with them and it irritates me and it also irritates me because a lot of what they do is so well done where I feel like I have more faith in their products than they do even though they think I have a personal vendetta against them which I assure you I don't I keep buying their stuff but let's move off of that and talk more about the figure now that we've got that off our chest. Only issues I have with it really is I don't think it's the best design for brawn that's a personal thing. Outside of that the chest piece moves with the shoulders pretty often it's consistent with what happened with guzzle it's not my favorite element there and the knees are a little tight and I wish he held the gun better. You didn't need to have individually articulated fingers, just make the gun plug into the hand. And that's it. Positives wise, there's not a lot of paint, but I feel like the paint that's chosen here does shine through more than that chosen for Guzzle. The articulation is all there for the most part. It also has a huge fun factor similarly to Guzzle. It's a fun figure to mess around with, pose, play with, etc. All of that works. The toy element definitely works on this mold. Transformation, pretty straightforward, easy to flip back and forth. Plastic feels good, but all in all, it's hard for me to recommend this set at the price unless you're good with the price. So this is one of those sets where to me it really comes down to that price point what's written on that sticker if the price doesn't bother you at all i think you'll be happy with the figures if you're like it seems a little steep i can assure you that in hand it's gonna seem even steeper but i am happy to have a guzzle and sh i mean i'm just happy to have something new these days but anyway thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care